Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to our liturgy. Masks are not required in the church at this time. However, our Eucharistic ministers will be masked as the Eucharist is distributed. Please join us in singing number 720 from the Breaking Bread hymnal, number 720, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, we gather uh, this weekend to celebrate the conclusion of our liturgical year with a celebration of Christ the King. And in our readings today from Daniel, uh, from the letter to the Hebrews, and from John's Gospel, uh, we're reminded that uh, the Lord's kingship is forever, and that he has uh, made us, we'll hear this in the second reading, uh, partakers of his kingdom by, by being priests. Each of us in baptism uh, shares in the priesthood of Christ. So let's call to my moments when we have uh, failed to embrace this vocation, uh, this gift from the Lord to offer our lives in, in sacrifice uh, for the good of others and for, for the Lord's glory, and now ask for his forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thanks for your great glory. 
Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever, amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things we've been working on with, uh, with uh, Deacon Benjamin and sort of integrating him into the community is uh, getting him established here. So uh, a few weeks ago, he, he got his Social Security card, which then enabled him to begin preparations to get a, a driver's license. So uh, this, this week, he got his, his permit, which is great. Uh, and yesterday, no, it's good, really. <laughs> uh, yesterday, uh, he and I went to a, a family's house, and I said, how would you like to drive? So, you know, if you have a permit, you can drive as long as there's a licensed passenger in the car with you. That would be me. And he said, yes. So we put the little you know, driver permit sign in the back of, of my car, and then I handed him the keys to... now. I love my car. Um, my car I have had since before I was ordained a priest, all right? That thing is going to live forever. It will, uh, so I love this car. And of course, now I get to sit in the passenger seat, handing my keys to a man who grew up in a country driving on the other side of the road, right? Okay. So uh, we went out. It was about a 12-minute journey to get to where we were, and of course I was navigating and the entire time trying not to interfere, to be a backseat driver, uh, but in the most reassuring voices saying things like, you know, maintain lane, use your turn signal, that's a stop sign. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it was a new experience for me, right? Because here is, here is a, a place uh, where I'm used to being in control, an environment where I know what the feel is supposed to be, um, and I'm very comfortable there. And I was asked, for the sake of a, a greater good, helping this man learn to, to drive, uh, to, to let go of that, to still participate, but to, to give up the, the wheel. So the invitation this weekend for Christ the King weekend is, is very much the same. It's to reinvest with the conviction uh, that the Lord Jesus has been given dominion over everything. And our responsibility um, as Christians is to acknowledge and sort of give an assent to that, yes, more and more over more and more areas of our life. Because for all of us, there are, are parts of our life um, where we hesitate uh, to hand over the keys, right? Yes, I trust God, of course. Yes, I love God. Yes, I know he loves me more than I love myself. He can bring about a good, I can't. And yet, and yet, I just don't want to let this thing go. I want to cling to a sense that I can direct things. 
all of us have at least one area of our life where that's tough. It's just tough to hand that over. And this is a wonderful weekend to say, okay, Lord, what's that area in my life? Or what are those areas in my life? And what can you give me to help uh, me give an assent to say, okay, I'm going to let you direct and guide and counsel me through how I'm supposed to live this part of my life in, in a better way. Now, in the second reading today from, from Revelation, um, John gives us a, a little dose of encouragement for those of us who, who need to do this in maybe some substantial areas of life. So John says in the second reading today, that the Lord Jesus, of course, he is declaring a kingdom. We heard in the first ring from Daniel, the Son of Man has been given all things. In his interactions with Pilate today or with Caiaphas and the other gospel accounts of his trial, Jesus references back to that Daniel passage. He identifies as the Son of Man. He is the one whose kingdom is breaking forth. We hear that language again when he's talking with Pilate today. I am a king, right? My kingship, my kingdom is not here. But John, in the second reading today, says that he has made us, us, into a kingdom, right? And more to the point, called us to be priests in that kingdom. Right? Now, for most of us, of course, we think of priesthood and we think of ordained clergy, right? But truly, the gift of priesthood, that the call to live our lives in a sacrificial way that honors God and benefits our neighbor is part of everyone's baptismal call. In the waters of baptism, we became immersed not simply in the life of Jesus, but also in his priesthood, the ability to, to offer our lives in a, in a full, expressive way uh, that not only benefits us, but also benefits our neighbor and, and, as I mentioned, glorifies God. That knowledge that the Lord has already called me to a distinct life, an elevated life, that he's already invested in me. He's already pouring forth resources into me so that I can live this life of a priest well. That can often be the encouragement we need when we're looking at something that we don't want to see control on, right? To say, you know what? The Lord must think I'm capable of letting go of certain things, right? If I believe that the Lord has called me to a, a particular way of life that means giving him more and more dominion, and he's pouring forth resources into me, graces, gifts, that he's not stingy, that he's investing in me, well, maybe I can do it, right? That, that maybe the Lord is empowering me and equipping me in a way that I can trust him, and that I can step back a little bit, right? That doesn't mean I become um, completely disengaged from the matters of life. Uh, I'm a participant. I'm asked to participate in the Lord's ministry and his saving work in the world, um, but, but not to control it, right? Not to call the shots, but to, to follow his initiative and his, his impulses. For you and I, baptized Christians, we can call to mind that gift and say, okay, Lord, you obviously trust me to some capacity, right? You're, you're fueling me in a way to be able to, to see more and more to you. So I'm going to give, even if it's a meek, hesitating yes, and try and let you take the keys, right? And Lord, you're going to have to help me because I'm going to want to weigh in. I'm, I'm going to want to be in the back seat telling you where you should go and how you should get there. And, and Lord, you're going to have to help me, but, but, I, but I'm going to make this gesture, right? You and I should believe that the Lord honors those attempts that we make, right? Even if they're imperfect to, to hand over the car keys, right? And, and that again, at the end of the day, that is a life he's called us to, right? He, he's actually designed us to be able to, to do that. And all he's asking us to do is to say, to say yes to it. So this weekend, may the Lord give us graces to, be identif to identify those parts of our lives where we just want to hold on to the reins. We want to dictate. We want to determine. 
Uh, we we want to designate, and may he give us the courage to say, okay, Lord, here you are. I'm going to be here with you in this, but, but I want you to take control. I want you to steer. I want you to guide me through this area of my life, and, and I'm going to give my assent. I'm going to give my, my, my yes. You're going to have to help me, but I'm going to give my yes to you. And in doing that, we become a fuller measure of who God has designed us to be. Men and women who are members of his kingdom, priests for his kingdom, and all ultimately uh, glorifying the Lord with our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Confident that the Father always hears our prayers. We offer our needs and intentions. For the church on earth, that our members look always to Christ as their guide and source of wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, that they look to Christ the King for inspiration and showing care for the people given to their charge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our own nation be a sign of freedom, peace, and compassion for the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are enamored by the wealth and materially of this life, may their eyes be opened to the treasures in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the poor, the afflicted, and those who are bound by addiction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, and for those who have died from our parish this past year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. And today, we pray especially for Bill Ott, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for a grace that we might allow your Son to have more and more dominion over more and more of our lives trusting that your kingdom is unfurling communally and in our individual lives. Help us to cede control to your Son and trust that in doing so, we become the men and women you have called us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are being prepared, please join with us in singing page 80, 382, the summons, number 382.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, He himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our first communion song, number 422, How Great Thou Art, number 422. I see. 
sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my song, my Savior God to thee. How great the That God his son not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my song Our second song can be found on page 504. Page 504, Unless a Grain of Wheat. Unless 
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Announcements. Welcome to any parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. We are glad to have you with us this weekend. Thank you to respondents to our annual stewardship appeal for the parish and diocese. Parishioners are invited to prayerfully discern their offerings of both the gift of financial support and the gift of presence and return their commitment over the next few weeks. Thank you to those who brought in photos of your deceased loved ones for our display this month. Please remember to pick up your photos before the end of November. Mass on Thanksgiving and on Friday will be at 9 a.m. The Thanksgiving Mass will also be live streamed. Thursday evening confessions will still be available on Thanksgiving. This Thursday, the Flame of Love Marian Devotion continues their weekly devotion in the church. During the four weeks of Advent, Deacon Fenlon will offer a Monday evening series on Thomas Kempis the Imitation of Christ. A week from Tuesday, Immerse, an evening of music, praise, and worship, and healing prayer, will hold the first of six offerings in the church held during the, Advent, uh, during the Advent and Christmas seasons. In two weeks, our Advent morning reflection will also be held in Moore Hall. In two weeks, the Sarens hold their annual chili dinner in Moore Hall, benefiting the seminarians of the diocese. E, uh, Eucharist uh, adoration continues in the church through the end of the year from noon to 9 p.m. on Sundays. For details on any of these events, check out our bulletin, website, weekly email blast, or scan the QR code in the pews. Thanks, Sarah. Good job. There was a lot there, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next week is uh, Advent, the beginning of Advent, um, and we've got a lot of things going on here at the parish to participate in. Some things are just for a morning, some are every week, and some last for the Advent and the Christmas season. So check out the bulletin or our website for information on those, those offerings. For any of you who are in town this week uh, for Thanksgiving to celebrate with your families, uh, we're glad to have you with us this week and next weekend here at the parish. Uh, may the Lord truly bless uh, our gatherings together this week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing song, number 723, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King, number 723.
Here's a tree. 